Yeah. 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 Did you see me yesterday? You were walking your dog. You came to see it at 8:30. You did. Yeah. Well, Logan Road. Yes. Just oh, I don't know. Then you put them all. People right. like they be for a I don't be. You I, I know. I don't. I don't a lot be. of times I I can't see or post so quickly. I I wave. Yeah. You know, even if you're giving me the finger, I wave. Just try to start. My wife said she was seeing you every day around the same time, bringing the camera. Usually. Pan. Yeah. Hmm? Start meeting. Yeah. Please stand as we salute the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At a quick notice of the meeting to be held by the Township of Ocean Board of Education on Tuesday, July 24, 2018, at 8 p.m., has been provided in accordance with the requirements of Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Notice the meeting was posted on the bulletin board in the lobby of the Building 163, Monmouth Road, Old Kirk, New Jersey, all Ocean Township District Schools and Transportation, and the School District website on January 3, 2018. Notice the meeting was transmitted to the Asbury Park Press on January 6, 2018 and the New Coaster newspaper on January 3rd, 2018. Notice the meeting was filed with the Municipal Clerk, Township of Ocean, and the Municipal Clerk, Village of Lock Arbor on January 3rd. Mr. General, please call the roll. Mr. Clayton. Here. Mr. Dietrich. Here. Mr. Fuller. Here. Uh, Mr. Hatton. Here. Dr. Marshall. Here. Ms. McGovern. Here. Uh, Mr. Parlamas. Here. Mr. Stoopy. Here. And Mr. Plutus. Here. We have nine members present. We have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. General. Move along. We're going to enter into our super. We have no uh, student representation tonight, so we're going to enter right into our superintendent report, Dr. Spankowitz. Well, thank you. And a few things uh, this evening. Uh, we have um, our uh, semi-annual uh, HIV report that we'll get to in a moment. Then we have actually a little bit different from the uh, sequence that you folks have. We're going to have a presentation by our science supervisor, Christy Casano and Patrick Sullivan. Thank you for being here. So we're excited to see that. And then from there, I'll do an end of year recap on the strategic plan from year one. Excellent. So first up, i uh, just like to give a uh, uh, district HIP summary report. So in support of the anti-bullying uh, anti -bullying Bill of Rights, and in accordance with the Board of Education Policy 5512, the superintendent, that's me, is required to report uh, to the public twice a year on acts of harassment, intimidation, and bullying, and the information I'm providing. This evening covers the reporting period from January 1, 2018 through January 30th, 2018. And this information includes the number, the nature, the effect, and the mode of the incidents. So uh, first, uh, initially we had eight uh, uh, initiated incidents, or, or eight investigations uh, for the time of January 1st through January 30th. One was at Ocean Township High School, three at the Intermediate School, two at Ocean Township Elementary, and two at Juan Massa. There were none at Wayside during that time. Of those eight, incidents, uh, excuse me, investigations, there were four confirmed HIV incidents. Um, the nature of the incidents, uh, and they also could be overlapping, uh, two pertain to uh, religion, one to ancestry, two to sexual orientation, and one uh, related to another other distinguishing characteristic. Uh, the mode of the incidents, three were physical, one was verbal, and one was written. Uh, the actions resulted in both suspensions and detentions, counseling when appropriate, and all of the offenders were mandated to participate uh, in counseling, as I said, when necessary, counseling was provided to victims as well, which is another cr critical part to, to the process. Um, so uh, that, uh, overall, I'd like to thank all the administrators, the teachers, everyone involved in this process, uh, being able to identify students and, and when, uh, uh, harassment, intimidation, bullying is happening so we can get help to students who are, who are victims in this situation. So if there's any questions on that, but uh, that would include that, uh, that report for this evening. Any questions from the board? No. no questions? All right. Thanks, Dr. All right. Uh, with that, uh, we're probably going to okay. have to move out we'll here. So I'll introduce Christine Pisano, our K-5 
uh, Science and Math Supervisor in GFG, and also Patrick Sullivan, our Secondary Science Supervisor. Um, they're going to give uh, sort of a, a, a little update and things that are uh, fun and exciting and innovative going on in the area of science, of which there are many things. Um, I tried to, I told them to try to keep it under three hours, so hopefully. Two. Under two, two, two and a half. Okay, so we're good. So I'll hand it over to them. classroom where the teacher led the class and the curriculum was driven by the textbooks. Whereas today, students are the facilitators of learning and the curriculum is interactive and has students seeing, doing, and exploring science. The big shift here is the students are now actively engaged much more than in the past. It's all about active learning, student-centered learning, and students also we're hoping that they can have more options and opportunities with exploring science. And it's about, it's about learning science by doing, not just learning science to learn science. And that's, that's probably one of the big shifts here. So tonight we're going to showcase all the initiatives from K to 12 that have taken place over the last few years and show you where we plan to go from here. Now the Next Generation Science Standards, New Jersey is the 19th one of 19 states to adopt these uh, new standards. Next Generation Science Standards, also known as NGSS, also known as Next Gen. And unlike previous standards, which were very one-dimensional, uh, these standards, you have science content, you have science and engineering practices, you have cross-cutting concepts. These layers are brought together, they're intertwined, and what they do is they, it, it's about students experiencing science and, stu and stu students acting as scientists as they explore and learn. Uh, it, it, that's a big part of the whole active learning process. Scientific phenomena are observable events that occur in the natural world, and it allows our students to use science in order to formulate explanations or predictions about what's going on in the world. And this is a big, a big component to the NGSS. This is, this is to serve as a hook as to get the students curious about what's going on in science. So they're asking questions like, what if, why, what can we do about this, what's next, you know, how might this happen? It's all about the asking of questions, which is supposed to drive their, their interest. I'm going to talk about six different initiatives that took place over the elementary level. The first is the Makerspace Club and classroom activities. The Makerspace Club uh, started three years ago, and it was a way to get the students in, um, excited about the maker movement. The club um, provided students with the opportunity to use creative and problem-solving skills, and skills to tinker and build while having fun. You can see that some of the pictures um, where they are in the Makerspace Club, but you'll also see in the classroom the activities that are taking place. As the teachers became more comfortable with the maker movement, you started to see these projects um, embedded in the classroom and become an essential part of the classroom. Um, and we do have a couple of our makerspace uh, facilitators here that did work, Lorianne and Kathy Dennis, I think helped out for a little while. Um, but what's important here is not that it was just the one hour after school, is that these kinds of activities, whether you walked into the makerspace club or in the science classroom, you would see these same types of activities going on. Next is the curriculum. Last year we spent time revising the curriculum and aligning it to the next gen science standards. But like we said earlier, we were shifting from the old to the new. And we didn't just want to have a, an old traditional curriculum document that was in a binder and sat on the shelf and it only referenced a couple times during the year. We wanted to have an interactive document that consisted of multimedia resources and that was integrated. Again, we no longer wanted to teach in isolation, so you'll find throughout the document that there's wonders connections from the reading program, 
We have math and technology connections. So it's a live document that can be revised as we move on through the year. And this document is something that's going to evolve over time. It's, it's already evolved. It's going to keep evolving. At every school year now, uh, this, this, this document is very dynamic. It's no longer static, which is what, what it was in the old days. Uh, now it's just it's very widely constantly looking for new activities to bring in. And, and by the same token, something that maybe you know, isn't working or something that, that seems to be uh, you know, old news now, we can pull out. So it's constantly uh, in flux. Next are mystery science lessons. And these are um, a project-based multimedia resources. So like I said before, we're no longer using textbooks, but multimedia resources in the classroom. And how the lessons work for this, it starts out with a problem, a uh, question that students would ask. Like, you'll see on the bottom left-hand picture, there's students working, that's a first grade class, and their question that was asked was, why do birds have beaks, okay? After the question is posed, there is short videos, and you'll see them watching the short video in the background. And then it culminates with an experiment that the students work on to try to solve the, the reason why, the question that they posed in the beginning. You'll see all of these classes, um, all the students are working on a mystery science lesson. The students are creating lava. The students in the second picture with the books and the coins are building bridges out of two pieces of paper. Um, again, the students on the lower left-hand corner were trying to figure out why birds have beaks. And then the center picture has um, students creating and um, making um, uh, er, um, their erupting earthquakes. Um, no. Volcanoes. Volcanoes, <laughs> sorry. And on the right are students that um, became engineers and had to propose how um, they would create a specific uh, problem, a problem that they were posed with, with a specific amount of money that they had for the budget. But as you can see, whether you're looking at a first grade class or a fifth grade class, third grade, the students are actively engaged. There's collaboration going on, higher level thinking, and students are taking risks. They're not just sitting behind a desk and just um, trying to absorb information. They're active participants in the class. Next is Maker's Day. And this year, we had all of our uh, schools participate, uh, three of the elementary schools, and middle school, and high school. And although Makerspace is on two different days, uh, Friday and a Saturday, and typically celebrated in schools on a Friday, we had some schools participate on the one day, whereas other schools participated in a month um, of activities. And what you'll see up here is there are some um, projects that are taking place for the Maker's Day, but you'll other see other projects where kids are working together. Those were taking place in the classroom. So like I said before about the um, Maker Makerspace uh, Club, these things are not just happening for one day. These are things that if you walk into a classroom, you will see happening on a daily basis. But I want to show you a quick video of what it looked like.
So again, that was, uh, most of those were hap happened and took place for the major state. But again, if you walk into any of the classrooms, science classrooms throughout the year, you'll see these kinds of projects happening. Not only at the upper grades, but as well as kindergarten. Next are the innovation labs. These were, this past year was the first time that they were established. There are four different labs, one at each of the elementary schools and the intermediate school. The lab is fully stocked with all of these um, maker and wonderful activities that the students love. We have um, little bits, 3D printers, which were a new addition at the end of this year. We're excited about that. Ozobots, Caterpillar, Snap Circuits, um, Green Screens, you name it, they're in there. There's so much for the kids to use um, hands on. Next, you'll see that in these labs and in the classrooms, students are working. We have kindergarten, third, and fifth grade students all coding using Makey Makey's, uh, Ozobots, and up in the right-hand corner, you'll see kindergarten stu students using a coda pillar, and they're coding as early as kindergarten. Last, we have the Family Fun Night and STEM Nights. We had two family fun nights, one for K to two and one for three to five. And the, the night revolved around a theme, which was Passport to Learning. And that night, um, students came in with their parents and each student received a passport for the classroom activity that they would be traveling to. After they traveled and went to each of the classrooms, they received a stamp for their participation in there. The event was all uh, interdisciplinary connected. So the rooms that the students uh, went to revolved around language arts, science, math, and social studies. And we do have a couple teachers here that were there that night too, Lisa, Mary. Um, it was a, a fun night. The other night that we had was uh, held at the intermediate school. It was for all K to 12 students. It was a STEM night where students came to the building and they were engaged and working on uh, STEM hands-on activities. When we first put this together, since it was our first time um, uh, setting up these annual, which were now these annual events, we weren't sure the turnout that we would get. But, and it did change, right? We had to change it a couple times. The outcome of the three nights were over 500 students and parents attended. And with the help of 50 teachers that volunteered their time, it was a success. The students were excited. They were talking about it the next day. They asked if there were more rooms that they can travel to. So they were fully engaged. And what really was important that night is it gave students the opportunity to share with their parents what their classroom looked like and how they're learning in their classroom. So parents, I think it was eye-opening for them too because again, like in the beginning, we talked about the old way versus the new way. It was eye-opening for them too to see what the students are capable of. All right, on this slide, uh, we have some initiatives for grades uh, six to 12 science. Some of these initiatives we actually began in the past year or so and continued this past year and will continue going forward. And some of those initiatives that you see up there um, are coming down the pike in the next you know, year or so. Uh, I, well, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Here, quick. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to add on with Christine, as she said before about the, the maker space uh, in the elementaries. Uh, and, you know, we had a science club in the, in the middle school, which has morphed into a major space club, and uh, that's 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 available for grades five through eight. Although five and six, you know, meet separately, and grades seven, eight meet separately. And then coming into the high school, we have major space and science, you know, science club as well. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's all going forward. Now, project project and problem based learning, we have we have seen a big infusion of this in the last year. Um, on the left, we have uh, a project going on, well, it was going on in the greenhouse in the high school. Uh, the middle and the right slide, we have students in the seventh grade working on their hydroponic projects. Um, there's, there's been a, a big shift in the amount of uh, project-based learning that we're doing, uh, you know, six all the way through 12. On the left-hand side, we see some high school students in an earth and environment class. 
They were given the scenario of rising sea levels, what can New York City do to possibly prepare for that or to thwart that. Um, that's what they're trying to work on there. We have some eighth grade students on the right in a physical science setting where they're looking at how to make cars go faster, slower, up and down ramps, and trying to figure that all out. That's what we're working hard there. We have um, a new program that we're that we've been that we brought in this past school year. It's the live surgery program uh, from Liberty Science Center. They simulcast actual surgeries, and you can you can watch as they're doing a kidney surgery or some sort of uh, cardiac surgery, robotic surgery. And the, the really cool thing is the doctors are sitting there talking to the kids. Like their kids can ask the questions as they're operating. They can show the kids, you know, in real time exactly what's going on. So needless to say, the kids love it. Um, we're, we're hoping to be able to do this at least once a semester uh, going forward. So it's a very exciting program. To find STEM, uh, this is a digital resource. Uh, it's all pro uh, project-based learning, and we brought this in as a pilot in the 16-17 school year. We, brought, uh, we had it in earnest this past school year, the 17-18 school year. Um, this this program is actually available to the entire middle school, and uh, it, it's it's interdisciplinary, as you can see across the top. Um, my science teachers really have have gotten to be fairly expert at it. And my goal this coming school year is to um, is to make sure this gets uh, shared you know, shared well with the other disciplines in the school. Also, we see this as a very valuable resource for the new elective uh, connections elective that we have in the middle school. We think this is going to play a big role uh, in, in helping those students as well. Uh, this there's a lot here, and not nearly enough time to really go into in detail. Um, however. This, you can do it. you can do as much or as little as you want with, with this um, with this resource. There's there's tons of information there, all kinds of simulations. Uh, there's all kinds of like literary writing tasks, uh, all kinds of things you can do. Just as an example, there's a um, a baseball bat analyst is one of the projects uh, trying to develop the, the best kind of bat for hitting baseball. Unfortunately, for some reason, when it's loaded, the, the batter's not there. There's supposed to be a batter with a baseball bat in those balls, but you can see that you can manipulate like the, the weight of the bat, the size of the bat, whether the bat is wood or is metal, um, where on the bat is the ball making contact. So these are all variables that the kids can explore and try to figure out, you know, how to how to be the best bat. But kind of uh, kind of weird how that guy didn't show up on that, so. like a poltergeist. So that's a, a resource we're excited to, to keep going, going, going ahead. Um, on the left, uh, there are some eighth grade students working on the roller coaster project, which, which began with that defined STEM project. On the right, again, is uh, some of the setups for the uh, hydroponic projects. We have um, two garden situations, which are really starting to grow, you know, part of the pun. Um, we, uh, two years ago, we had a rain garden put in at the high school, right by the cafeteria. Uh, that was in conjunction with Rutgers University. Uh, this past year, we had a couple teachers at the high school who really took on this garden club, and they had a, a, a nucleus of kids that did tremendous things. That's the picture on the left. Uh, they wound up having many plant sales and were reaching out to the community. They have many grandiose plans going forward. Uh, they also, we also are the recipients of a $2,000 grant from the New Jersey Sustainable Schools, and uh, so we're, we're in the process of spending that money and using it you know, productively going forward. On the right, we have the middle school once again in action, and uh, we have plans on the table for a rain garden and a vegetable garden on the property there. You can see in the background, Gary Tattersall and his crew starting to create a wing two structure. We have rain barrels all ready to go that were created this past school year. Um, so, uh, again, with the help of Rutgers University, there's a lot, a lot to look forward to with these gardens. So. We also have been um, doing our best to maintain contacts, relationships, to build uh, networks, liaisons with people in the local community, um, also the Monmouth County. Uh, again, Rutgers, you know, keeps their hand in things. We, uh, we've had an Earth Day festival now going on seven years at the high school. 
in past years, we uh, invite some of the elementary school kids over. In the past, some of the middle school kids have come over. We have a, uh, the same animal lady, we call her, uh, comes in with all kinds of animals that the kids really gravitate to. And even though I'm a science person, I don't really care for them, especially the big snake, because I, I think I'll be the one where it wraps up and you know, strangles me to death, and I'll be in the news. That's not what you want to do. So but anyway, we, we, keep, we keep trying to work on those uh, relationships as So as we shared, we were talking about initiatives that were taking place over the last few years. Now we're going to talk about initiatives for the upcoming school year. At the elementary level, there's two initiatives that are going to be taking place. The first is the You Engineer, you engineer It Maker Lab Kits. So each of the grade levels will get these kits um, that are in addition to uh, the science curriculum. So they'll be able to use those within their classroom. The other is the Next Gen Science Standard Classroom Library sets. They are leveled readers and they are, they all are the same story, but they are on the student's level, below, on, approaching. <laughs> so these can either be used in the science class or the, link, or the ELA classes and they mirror the Wonders Program in the leveling. For 6 to 12, uh, we have piloted the STEM Scopes Program, digital program this past year, and also the Gizmos Program this past year, and we're gonna bring that in, we're gonna get full licenses for these going into the next school year for grade six with STEM Scopes and the Gizmos grade seven. These are very, they're interactive type digital resources. The, the students have the ability to uh, manipulate data and just change scenarios and well, what if this happens or let's try this instead. So it, 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 if the learning keeps going back on that and being able to have the choice and the option of, of how they want to create, um, and that's what we want to keep encouraging. Uh, Project Lead the Way, we're excited about uh, bringing, bringing that forward uh, this, this coming school year. Grade seven, we have the module Earth and the Environment, which fits in nicely with the curriculum at that level and also uh, just in the world we live in today, this is, this is going to help make our students uh, responsible citizens going forward in terms of the environment. Uh, and for eighth grade, we have the module called Science and Technology, which is physical science based, and that's that aligns with the curriculum that we that we do in the eighth grade. So um, we're very excited to, to bring that in. Again, it's more opportunities for the students to engage and gives them um, you know options to, uh, to to learning in the classroom. It's an exciting time to be in science classrooms today. Yeah, it's 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 busy and it's hectic and it's challenging, but it's it's great. Yeah, it's fun. And if you're like me, um, I always like to try to find humor in a few things here and there. Uh, so I, I would feel remiss if I didn't have a couple of science jokes there on the left. Um, uh, if you know enough about chemistry, periodically, that's, um, I don't know. and on the right, uh, you know. If you, want, if you order H2O, that's fine, but if H2O2 will kill you, that's you know, hydrogen peroxide, you really don't want to be drinking that. <laughs> and the, uh, the guy in the middle, that's, that's a picture of me in the morning uh, when I first get up. Kind of, you know, All right, thank you for your time. Yeah, I want to see theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Should we give you a two hour limit? You have to make a choice. To, to make this presentation because honestly what you just saw from Christine and Patrick in essence I think sums it all up uh, in, in, in their presentation. Um, <coughs> about a year ago, if you all recall, we went through the, the process of developing a strategic plan, one that we really didn't have a formal strategic plan for the district. Uh, so we worked with school boards and many of the people in this room, both administrators and staff, took part in that process, board members as well. And if you recall, we had approximately 75 to 85 people come out to each of our sessions to help us develop our plan. And that, uh, if you remember Kathy Wankoff from, from school boards, uh, was, was blown away every time we had a meeting because it's rare that that many people would come out. So it just speaks, to, I think, to uh, the, the great interest uh, that uh, our entire uh, uh, community has in education in Ocean Township. So, uh, when we, so what I would like to do tonight is just talk about some of the initiatives that we've made great progress on, and then also some of the things that we're looking to, to not just continue with that, but also move forward into, into the coming school year. And as I said, I think uh, I'm gonna refer probably back to your presentation so many times, because there's so many things that we talked about here that you showed. So I think that, uh, that that's a perfect, uh, perfect example. So uh, if you remember, there were several areas within our strategic plan. Uh, nearest and dearest to my heart, of course, is student success. So that's the first part we'll be looking at. So one of the key goals that we worked on this year uh, as part of the strategic plan was to expand the CTE offerings at uh, OTES. And of course, CTE is career and technical education, including offerings in technology, engineering, and visual performing arts. So as you know, we started the Spartan School of Business and Finance a year ago based off a grant that we received from the Department of Education for the expansion of CTE. Uh, this coming September, we, well, this past year, we, we uh, uh, Ms. Kasuba and her staff, Mr. Colon, uh, worked very hard to make sure that the uh, Spartan School of Technology would be up and running for this September, which it is, and we just kicked off the first summer program this year with that, very successful, about 25 to 30 kids in that program. Another class in Spartan School of, Tech, uh, of Business and Finance, another 25 to 30 kids. And then, of course, our goal for next year, which isn't really part of our plan, but just the expansion of CTE programs, is our visual perform Spartan School of Visual Performing Arts, which we're hoping to launch a year from now. Right? So that was a major part of our student success goal. And then, uh, you know, part of what goes into that uh, is ultimately the development of elective programs at the intermediate school, which will feed these programs. And I think, if I may have the first reference to your to your presentation. You saw that. I think what's going on in the major clubs and what's going on in the classrooms are a perfect key, particularly to the technology school uh, at the high school. Um, another key component uh, to the strategic plan that, that took place this year in the planning and, 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 and uh, uh, you know, the process of developing a new schedule for the intermediate school, and we're very excited about this uh, you know, for September. I mean, I, you know, I know there's a, there's a lot of trepidation, which you know, is very normal and typical for any kind of new schedule being put in place. But I think when you looked at what Christine and Patrick presented, you saw why a traditional schedule is no longer satisfactory for the type of teaching and learning we want going on in our schools. The elementary levels, they're learning um, on you know, hour-long classes, math, language, art, and science. Everything is more than 40 minutes. At the high school, we moved to that block schedule a number of years ago. The type of teaching and learning that now takes place is far more conducive to discovery learning that you saw in that presentation that can just naturally be done in a 40 minute period. So uh, it's gonna take some time. It's not gonna happen immediately, but over time, well, I'm not, I'll, I'll take that back. I think in many classrooms, we will see it pretty quickly because so many of the teachers right now at the intermediate school are teaching the way we saw. They just can't facilitate it as well in a 41 minute period as they will be able to in an extended period of time. They'll transition, I think, pretty easily. Others will need more time, and that's very natural and it'll take time and we'll help them there every step of the way. So we're very excited about that aspect of this. Um, max, oh, well, there you go. Now, once again, maximize technology integration into classroom practices, maximizing use of Chromebooks and other devices. I think that was pretty evident from what you saw. It's going on. 
It's happening every day. Um, you know, the investment that the board has made in, in Chromebooks, there, you know, there's, 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 there's pretty much a class that isn't going over Chromebooks on a regular basis. So that's very exciting. Uh, expanding the summer bridge programs, we have more students. We have, we have, if you go to our schools right now, any day, you would be amazed at how many kids are there, and not in that traditional, I fail, I'm sitting there, uh, you know, taking the class over again. That's not happening anymore. What's happening, our kids are coming to school for an, ex an extension of learning beyond the school year. That happens with our ESY program, and that, that has been traditional with ESY. But what's going on now is programs expanded at the elementary school level, at the intermediate school level, and also at the high school level. So we have kids at all levels who are in school, not because they necessarily have to be, but because they want to be. And it's going on all summer long. And we have teachers in those programs doing amazing projects. You know, the kind of things you saw on, the, on your presentation are the things happening in the classrooms in the summer. So that's really exciting. And this year, Mr. Janarone and our folks at Sodexo, um, we have breakfast for our, our kids. This is a little wide inside, but we have breakfast for the kids now who come in for those programs. Also under student success, we've really focused on various um, professional development, culturally responsive teaching, co-teaching in, in classrooms. There are so many classrooms where we have in class of four, whether it be with basic skills or, um, or special education, uh, trying to develop more positive cultures in our schools and environments, and also project-based learning, which Patrick spoke to. Um, other parts of the uh, strategic plan that are, have been going on is the constant monitoring of the Wonders Literacy Program and the Envision Math Program, which really have been going very, very well uh, over the last couple of years. Envision, you know, we, we've had Envision for a little while, but Envision 2.0 came in about two years ago. We saw some initial growing pains with that, but I think those have really kind of worked themselves out, thanks to Christine and the teachers doing a great job with that. And Wonders, I have to tell you, I've, you know, I've never seen the implementation of a major program like that uh, with, 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 without the kind of, you know, without people coming to a board meeting and, and going crazy for some reason or another. And we just didn't have it. And we didn't have it because one, the program was great, but two, the teachers embraced it and have done just a really amazing job in implementing that program. And I think, you know, when you go into classrooms and see kids you know, utilizing the program, um, you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's pretty evident to see why it's been so successful. But it was hard, right? I mean, it was a lot to do. But you guys have done an amazing job, and I applaud you every day because it's really been working out very well. So thank you for that. Or I would say, Okay, um, the next school goal, or the next goal was school culture and, and our school climate and culture. So um, one of the things that we wanted to do is establish a diversity, uh, district diversity council uh, to address important issues related to diversity and equity within our district. And that's something now that we've done within our um, instructional council. So an element of the instructional council moving forward will have this within it. One of the things we started at the end of the year was looking at our gifted and talented program and looking at ways that we can increase the diversity and, and the, the makeup of uh, the, the, the diverse makeup of, of gifted and talented, looking at ways that kids are, are identified for gifted and talented programs. So that's that's an outstanding conversation that we'll be having and, and continuing with. Conduct a school climate survey. We did that uh, back in um, late February, early March. And that data that we collected, both from parents, students, and staff, was really excellent. That was provided to all the, the principals who then shared that data with their, with their respective staff. Um, and a lot has learned from that. And then goals were developed on how to improve certain areas based on the results of that survey. And that's ongoing. Uh, promote progressive environment for staff and students where they feel safe in taking academic risks. So once again, I'll point to the presentation. You, know? um, you spoke to the old one, right? Uh, one of the things that, that we hear a lot are teachers who will come to us and say, we can do that, we're allowed to do that, we, we, can, we can take these, you know, we could, we could go off of the script, um, and teachers will say to me, well, that's the way we used to teach years ago, right, before NCLB, before state testing, before all these things became so uh, critical to what we do. Um, we're really trying to get away from this idea of um, uh, 
you know, of, of um, compliance and really working towards uh, allowing teachers to have the freedom to experiment and, and, and take chances and take risks, because that's what we want our kids to be doing as well. We want our kids to be taking risks in the classroom. And so um, we've really worked hard to try to uh, get away from this idea that, you know, can I do this? Not only can you do this, we want you to do it. And if, and if it doesn't work, that's okay. Try again, try something else, try something different. Keep trying until, um, you know, you find something that works well. Uh, foster teachers, student leaders, and empower them to support transformation within the district. I think that falls in line with the other one that we just said. You know, we want to empower our teachers, we want to empower our students to have more responsibility in their lives, <coughs> which is critical. You know, if, we're, if they're just sitting there as passive learners, then they don't own that. When they're active learners in the, in, in, in the process, then they own that learning and it means it's so much more meaningful for them. Uh, monitor the elementary redistribution, we've done that. Again, uh, you know, I, is there, we've seen school districts who have redistributed or redistrict, um, they're, 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 they're tried to at least, and it's met with unbelievable insanity to where they have to scrap their plans. Or last year we went through a redistribution with very little fanfare because I think we did it well, we did it right, we did it well thought out. We started with incoming kindergarten students only, we didn't go you know, shifting people all the way uh, all over the place. And um, you know, part of the goal was to try to bring down some of the class sizes and even out the class sizes around the district, alleviate some of the load at Wayside, shift it over to some of the schools that were lowering in their populations, and it worked out very well. And we, we saw some of that happening, and that will continue to, to move forward. Uh, expand the role of the student assistance counselors. Uh, I think that's evident with the you know the board support of, of getting a full time uh, student assistance counselor at the high school. We've also increased hours of our student assistance counselor at the middle school, and we also have maintained, I'm not, uh, we either maintain or maybe even increased slightly the hours at the elementary school. So now we have more student assistance counselor services um, than we've ever had before. And that's such a key component of our security plan. You know, we, we've talked a lot about class D officers over the course of the last couple months, but, but as important is our counseling services to make sure that we're identifying students who are at risk and and we can get them services before things become a major, major crisis, and that's 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 really important. Um, Christine talked about our, our family fun nights, and I'm really glad that they were fun because they were fun nights. Um, so the academic fun nights were awesome. If you were at those, I mean, you know, I didn't do the final number, so over 500 kids in town. So that's fantastic, and they were all great. Even ones that took place, you know, we had to, as you said, we have to change because of snow days. You know, March snow days and things. So um, just really fantastic to engage those families. And that comes up again as we go into our uh, community engagement. Uh, review, review all safety and security protocols, which we did, uh, which resulted in a lot of different changes, a lot of things that we did a little bit differently. Of course, probably the biggest thing is we talked about being the addition of the SACs and also the class three officers that we'll be uh, bringing in this, uh, this, this uh, coming school year. As we get to community engagement and outreach, increased community partnerships, I think Patrick spoke to that very well and talked about how we're utilizing the community more and more and more uh, so that we can provide authentic learning experiences for our students. Also engage staff and students to present to and participate with the community and getting our kids out more. Uh, the board, you know, DECA has always been a group that has gone out and about with the high school. This year the board supported a host of kids going off to their uh, convention uh, in, in Dallas. Uh, we also, this year at workshop at school boards in October, we had a number of student and staff uh, presenting. So uh, we'll get that information to the board um, uh, this year so we can go, so you all can go see our students. You know, every year we go down, we see other students, you know, this year we're gonna be there. So that's very exciting. Uh, so that was, a, that was a key of getting um, our, our, our staff and students out more and presenting in the, in the community. Expand our social media presence. We have more and more people on Twitter. Uh, uh, let me rephrase that, expand our positive use of social media um, and to provide information to the community. So we have far, so many more people on Twitter, which is great, and we encourage people to do that. Uh, survey our community to on the progress of the school district, and that falls in line with the, the school climate surveys. But I know our principals are always, 
working with you know, with the PTAs to, 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 to talk about what we could do better and how we could better serve our populations. And we've also this year made a concerted effort of getting more things out, even though we still have work to do in this regard, more things out when we do send out letters that we'd like more and more uh, translate them to, uh, to at least Spanish. And they'll probably be by the time we'll be working with French Creole as well very soon. Um, but more and more things going out in translation. And that was one of the big things of having a number of our Spanish-speaking community, bilingual community, at our strategic planning meetings. And that was a major thing that came out during that time. Um, and you know, I'd also like to mention the, uh, the bilingual night that we had. Uh, I think it really relates to that. We had such a well-attended uh, bilingual family night at the end of the year, and that was really outstanding as well. So facilities and finance, and Ken, feel, feel free to jump in here if you need to. Uh, so the creation of the innovation labs, and you heard Christine and, and Patrick speak to that. Every school now has a space designated for uh, project-based, innovative type of, of projects. Uh, evaluating operations and transportation, which is something that has always gone on, but particularly the, the cameras that have gone into the buses for this year, and of course more buses that we purchase for next year. Uh, provide equitable financing across the schools, and that, you know, the purpose of that really is to say, you know, every school is a little bit different. There are different populations in each school, and so we want to make sure that we're funding our schools equitably, not necessarily equally, because some schools have different populations and different pop, uh, different demographics that need to be addressed more so than others. For example, like the bilingual program at Riverside and other things like that. Uh, investigate and apply for discretionary grants. This past year, we completed the second year of our CTE grant. That's the $500,000 grant that we have. But you also heard Patrick speak about the uh, Sustainable New Jersey, which I think was in conjunction with NJDA, providing us with $2,000 for our, our, uh, our sustainable efforts. Um, uh, we've had you know, other grant opportunities that came up during the year. Uh, Sodexo applied for grants. Uh, we jets, have don't forget the Jets. I can never forget the Jets. The Jets will stay with me for the rest of my life. Um, the, uh, um, we had our, um, our security grant, so there's a lot of different grants that we applied for. Another thing that's gonna be coming up in the very near future related to grants is Perkins funding. And as we get more and more CTE students, Perkins is, is grant money that's available for CTE programs from the federal government. And as we get more and more students, we'll be able to apply for those programs. We typically don't qualify because we don't have any students, but as we get more, completers, we can qualify and be, be, you know, be able to get uh, more and more of that funding. So that kind of sums up where we've been, and so now looking at where we're going, and I kind of mentioned some of these things. So obviously, the Spark School of Visual and Performing Arts coming to the high school, we're very excited about that a year from now. Uh, evaluating that new schedule at the intermediate school, there's new electives that will ultimately come at it. That'll be an ongoing process. Increase opportunities for all students to engage in advanced coursework. Um, you know, we, we want to see more and more kids challenging themselves. That's really the key. We don't want kids just <clears throat> falling into a place of that, you know, this level class, even though I think I can perform better, this level class is good enough. I'd rather get a 95 year than an 85 year and not have to challenge myself. We don't want to foster that culture. We want kids trying to challenge themselves as much as possible. Uh, promote more inclusive environments, whether that be with uh, ELL students, special education students, we want less pull out and more in and co-teaching models going on. Um, expanding K-5 extracurricular opportunities. We see how successful Maker was. You know, we've added art clubs, we've added book clubs, we've added safety patrols. So more and more, we've heard over the years that we need more and more at the elementary level to offset, you know, to, to provide more extracurricular opportunities for uh, elementary kids and we're looking to expand that. A uh, number of the schools are reviewing their discipline policies and, and looking about how ways they can create more restorative justice practices as opposed to just you know punishment for things that get done. We have to get to the root of problems of why kids are acting um, in negatively sometimes, so that's a critical component. And to initiate practice to recruit staff members in order to increase diversity in all job categories. So um, you know one of the things that we actively look to do is to try to uh, increase diversity within our staff, uh, which is you know hasn't been um, an easy task, but something that we do try to do every single solitary. Uh, yeah. uh, increase our cultural celebrations. Uh, our district newsletter from the Board of Education is going to be starting very soon. And uh, we always hear about improving our website and, and cleaning up things within our website and increasing the, uh, the viewership of our website. Um, 
We have a technology audit that's going on, so we're looking to improve the district te uh, technology infrastructure, expanding our shared services, and also initiating, well, we've had the tuition policy in place, but really going uh, full, uh, uh, you know, uh, more concerted effort, meeting with local superintendents of K districts to try to increase more tuition students to the district. So, that was it in a nutshell, but, you know, what I will, the last thing I would really say about our strategic plan is I, I know a lot of districts go through the process because they feel they have to, they, they feel like it's something that they, they should do, uh, and then they go through the process, they write a plan, and they don't look at it, and they don't pay attention to it, they don't, you know, it just becomes something that sits on the shelf. When we start this process, we were very conscious of that that was something that we were going to have happen, that we wanted this plan to really be a true guide to leading our district, that everybody, you know, will have a say in. And I think it's done that. Every, every meeting we have, we list what goals are tied to the strategic plan, or how this has been tied to the strategic plan, our district goals are tied to the strategic plan, the administrator goals, our professional development goals. Everything that we put out is tied in some way to the strategic plan. So this really has been something that has guided our district. I think it's worked out far better than, than I thought it would. Um, and it's guiding our district. And, and, and uh, I think, as you can see, just from what was presented from one subject area today, I think we're seeing a lot of very positive things. Some of those things, of course, started before the plan because I think the ideas of the plan were in place and then we just needed that formalized, you know, written document to, to really solidify it so that it was very clear to everybody what our vision is and where we want to take the school district. So, happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. As it is five to nine, there may not be a need for questions, but that's okay. I'm here all night. Thank you very much. I think they actually are all night. Yes. Try to Following our series of motions to be read by the committee chairpersons, all the motions have been discussed at a recent public work session. The motions have been approved at a public work session, and the minutes for the approved items are on the back table. All motions are posted on the bulletin board in the rear of the auditorium, along with the reference list and attachments. At this point in the meeting, we will now conduct the first two public comment sessions. The first session will be open for public comment on agenda items only. The second session will be at the end of the meeting and can be on any topic. Would anyone from the public at this time like to make a comment about agenda items? All right. Move along. Approval of work meetings. Madam Vice President. Yes, I'd like to move to approve the meeting minutes in accordance with the Board of Education Bylaws 0168 recording of board meetings for work meeting and executive session minutes for July 10th, 2018. Uh, do, do I have a second? Second. Ken? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Thank you, my, Madam Vice President. Policies and regulations, Mr. Janero. Okay, tonight uh, before the board, we have uh, policy 7446. It's the school security uh, program. Uh, is the title of the policy. This, is, this sets us up to enable uh, class three officers uh, to be hired within a district and for insurance reasons and legality reasons, that's all. It's all in the in the policy, as you see. Uh, the first reading was held at the last workshop. Uh, tonight is the second and final reading, and looking for for, for final approval of that policy. So, uh, if there's any further comment or questions from the board, and then uh, we'll just look for a motion and a second to uh, approve the final reading. Of the policy. So moved. Second. Mr. Haddon. Fuller. Okay, uh, roll call, uh, Mr. Clayton? Yes. Mr. Dietrich? Yes. Ms. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Haddon? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Yes. Ms. McGovern? Yes. Mr. Parlamas? Yes. Mr. Stoopy? Yes. And uh, Mr. Blues? Yes. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. Approval of bills, Mrs. Fuller? Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the approval of the following paid items as detailed below, which total $5,430,000, net 
$430,945.22. So I have a second. Second. Mr. John. Okay. Uh, Mr. Clayton. Yes. Mr. Dietrich. Yes. Ms. Fuller. Yes. Mr. Hyde. Yes. Dr. Marshall. Yes. Mr. McGovern. Yes. Ms. Perlamas. Yes. Mr. Stoopy. Yes. And Mr. Blutes. Yes. Motion counts. Thank you. Financial Management and Resource Resource Services Commission. Thank you. I have 22 items this evening. Number one, the following motion is to transfer monies from one account in the budget to another and to provide adequate balances referred to in the first motion. Number two is that the following resolution certifies that the budget balances at the end of April were adequate to pay all remaining balances, I'm sorry, all remaining obligations of the 2017-18 school year and that account groupings required by the state have adequate balances. The board is also certifying that the independent reports of the treasurer and the business office are in agreement. Number three, I move to approve the following security drills for the month of June 2018. Number four, I move to approve the extension of the award of the automatic temperature control for the 2018-19 school year with the Jersey State Controls in Lakewood, New Jersey for a 0% increase as follows. Number five, move to approve the renewal of the NJ shared insurance services including workman's comp workers' compensation and property and liability coverage with the New Jersey School Insurance Group for a one-year premium July 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019 for a total amount of one million one hundred. I'm sorry, $1,152,830, including all lines of coverage enabling school districts to cooperate with each other to make the most efficient use of resources. Number six, move to approve shared service resolution between the Township Promotion Board of Education and Hope Academy Charter School Maintenance Services. The agreement will be in place from June 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019, July 1, excuse me. Number seven, move to approve the rental agreement for use of pool facility at the JCC for high school swim team practice and swim meets for the 18-19 season for a total cost of $18,570 as per the attached. Number eight, move to approve the second year renewal of bid award with first vehicle services of the for the management and maintenance of the Township of Ocean bus fleet commencing on September 1st, 2018 and ending on August 31st, 2019. The management fee will be $31,955, a 0% increase over last year. Number nine, move to approve the extension of the 2017-18 price pricing for boiler cleaning and maintenance services for the 2018-19 school year to Central Boiler Repair Company Inc. of Oakhurst, New Jersey for a 0% increase. Number 10, move to approve the continuation of an agreement with Mission One Staffing Services to provide classroom, bus room, classroom aids and bus aids for special education program and transportation on an as-needed basis during the 18-19 school year. Number 11, move to approve an agreement with Monmouth, Monmouth Ocean Educational Service Commission to provide part-time instructional special education and transportation aid placements as possibly needed for the period of July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Number 12, move to approve the submission of the IDEA grant application for the fiscal year 2019 and accept the grant award of the funds under, upon subsequent approval of the FY 2019 IDEA application as listed. Number 13, move to approve the acceptance of funds under the Elementary and Secondary Education Act grant application FY 2019. This notification is required under ESEA NCLB compliance regulations. Salary and staff information will be forthcoming as listed. Number 14, move to approve the donation of an, a piano from Dr. Arthur Vassar to the Township Ocean Intermediate School Music Department. Number 15, move to approve a donation of a piano from Mr. Michael Fielder to the Township of Ocean Intermediate School Music Department. Number 16, move to approve a contract for behavior educational consultant of a special education student with Brent DeNovi Associates, LLC. The contract for services will be an anticipated $303.75 a day for 182 days for an approximate total of $55,282.50. Number 17, move to approve the following revised physical therapy contract to Invo Healthcare for $79 per hour as listed. 18, move to approve the Township of Ocean Board of Education acceptance of the 2018 19 New Jersey, New Jersey non public school textbook allocations for the district total in amount of $39,196 in each non public school allocation as follows. Number 19, move to approve the Township Ocean Board of Education acceptance of the 1819 New Jersey non public school nursing allocations for the district totaling amount $79,734 and each non public school allocation as follows. 
Number 20, move to approve the Township of Ocean Board of Education Acceptance 2018-19 New Jersey Non-Public School Security Aid Program allocation for the district for a total amount of $61,650 and each non-public school allocation is as follows. Number 21 is actually going to be struck from the financial management section and will come up again in instructional um, instruction and education. Number 21, I move to approve reduction in state aid for the 2018-19 school year and a corresponding reduction in the 2018-2019 school budget. Whereas the Township of Ocean School District was issued state aid notices by the Department of Edu Education in March 2018 in the amount of $8,079,720 or approximately 10% of the district general fund budget. Whereas the New Jersey Department of Education on July 13, 2018 has issued revised 2018-19 state aid notices totaling $7,472,792. This reflects a decrease of $606,928, or 7.5% in state aid to the school district. Whereas due to the increased special education costs, it is projected that the school district will qualify for additional extraordinary special education aid and a small percentage of the total additional costs incurred by the school district in the amount of $100,000. Whereas additional fund balance will be appropriated towards the 1819 budget revenues in the amount of $150,000. Whereas original appropriations in the 1819 budget will be reduced in the amount of $356,928. Therefore, be it resolved that the Township of Ocean Board of Education has determined that the above additional, additional projected revenue combined with reductions in appropriations will offset the loss of state aid in the amount of $606,928 for 2018-2019 school budget. The Board of Education therefore authorizes the estimated revenues and appropriation adjustment plan for the 2018-2019 school budget and authorizes the submission of this budget adjustment plan to the Department of Education County Office. <coughs> so in review, <laughs> I have motions for 1 through 20 as well as 22 and I would like a second please. Second. And, and just a note for the public, uh, 722 is an expanded. 20. Uh, resolution that's on the on the back table uh, regarding the state aid uh, reductions in state aid. Okay, Mr. So Lewis, second. Um, any other questions or comments? Okay, Mr. Clayton. Yes, I was one through twenty, and I recused myself from the last one because of my position with the State Department of Education. Okay, Mr. Dietrich. Yes. Ms. Fuller. Yes. Mr. Hatt. I vote yes, and I sure do thank the folks in Trenton for once again giving us the opportunity to prove that we can scramble and cut funding at the last minute. Never get tired of doing that every year. Thank you. Dr. Marshall. Yes. Mr. McGovern. Yes. Ms. Parlamas. Yes. Mr. Stoopy. Yes. And uh, Mr. Palutis. Yes. Okay, the motion is carried. Thank you. Instruction, education, and student activities, Dr. Marshall. Thank you, Mr. Plutus. I have six motions for consideration this evening. Item number one is a motion to approve student observers for the 2018-19 school year in accordance with the attached memo dated July 6, 2018. Item number two is a motion to approve student teachers for the 2018-19 school year in accordance with the attached memo dated July 6, 2018. Item number three is a motion to approve the attached memo dated July 20th regarding staff professional development activities. Item number four is a motion to approve um, in accordance with District Policy 6471, with Board Member Amy McGovern uh, attend a leader, leadership regional training workshop August 1st, 2018, for a cost of $50. Item number five is a motion to approve revisions to out of district placements for the 2018 ESY program in accordance with the attached memos dated July 16th. And item number six is a motion to approve Maria Cavadas of Paradox LOC Middletown to provide Portuguese translator services in accordance with the attached memo dated July 17th. I have a second. A second. Okay, uh, Mr. Clayton. Yes. Mr. Dietrich. Yes. Ms. Fuller. Yes. Mr. Howe. Yes. Dr. Marshall. Yes to all items except number two from which I recuse myself regarding Monmouth University. Okay, Ms. McGovern. Yes, except to item four as I recuse myself since it's myself. Okay, Ms. Parlamas. Yes. Mr. Stoopy. Yes. And Mr. Palutis. Yes. Okay, the motion's carried. 
Thank you, Dr. Marshall. Negotiations, Mr. Adams. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report tonight. Thank you. Personnel, Madam Vice President. Yes, Mr. President, I have 10 motions this evening. First, I'd like to move to approve an, an, an unpaid family leave of absence as designated under FMLA and NJFLA for Captain Picoso, health and PE teacher at the Intermediate School, beginning um, on approximately December 10th and continuing through March 8th. Number two, I'd like to move to approve credit reimbursement for courses completed during the winter and spring 2018 as listed. Number three, I'd like to move to approve Greg Colon as the Career Pathways Coordinator at the high school for the upcoming year. Number four, I'd like to move to approve the retirement of Dr. Susan M. Fisher, school psychologist at Wanamassa. Number five, I'd like to move to approve a substitute teacher for the 2018-19 school year as listed. Number six, I'd like to move to approve that contracts be issued to the following. Diana Franswick, special ed teacher at the Intermediate School. Denise Geary, 10-month secretary at Wanamassa and Ocean Township Elementary Schools. Jessica Kerber, elementary teacher at the Intermediate School. Alexa Lewis, basic skills part-time at Wayside. Gia Modestino, special ed teacher at the Intermediate School. Elise Schreier, mathematics teacher at the Intermediate School. She's a maternity leave replacement, non-tenure track position. And Wayne Prasak, computer technician level one, district wide. Number seven, I'd like to move to approve the resignation of Cassidy Vargas, special ed teacher part-time at the Intermediate School, effective July 19th. Number eight, I'd like to move to approve non-athletic advisors as listed. Number, number nine, I'd like to move to approve non-athletic advisors for the 2018-19 school year as listed. And number 10, I'd like to move to approve child study team employment for the 2018 summer months as listed. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Janerow. Wait, I just have one thing. The um, number nine, it said move non-athletic advisors, but they are athletic advisors. No? Right. Sorry. Athletic coaches. Athletic coaches. So noted. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, McGovern. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's number nine? Number nine. Number nine is actually athletic advisors, the, not. The title says athletic, but the wording in the. It says, says non. Athletic. Athletic. Good coach. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second with that change. Okay. Uh, motion and second. Uh, Mr. Clayton? Yes. Mr. Dietrich? Yes. Mrs. Fuller? Yes. Mr. High? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Yes. Ms. McGovern? Yes. Uh, Mr. Parlamas? Yes. Mr. Stupi? Yes. And Mr. Palouse? Yes. And the motion is carried. Thank you. Public relations, Mr. Dietrich. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have one item this evening. Move to approve the 2018-2019 non-resident tuition fees for individuals wishing to attend Township of Ocean Schools. Tuition fees for the following grade levels will be as follows. Application fee will be waived and a 25% employee tuition discount will apply if signed up by August 1st. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. General. Mr. Clayton. Yes. Mr. Dietrich. Yes. Mr. Fuller. Yes. Mr. Hyde. Yes. Dr. Marshall. Yes. Mr. McGovern. Yes. Mr. Parlamas. Yes. Mr. Stupi. Yes. And Mr. Palutis. Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Technology, Mr. Stupi. I have one motion. Move to approve the acceptance of 2018-19 New Jersey Non-Public School Technology Initiative Program allocations in the amount of $26,424 as listed. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. General? Mr. Clayton? Yes. Mr. Dietrich? Yes. Mrs. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Hatt? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. McGovern? Yes. Mr. Parlamas? Yes. Mr. Stubbe? Yes. And Mr. Palutis? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. At this time, is there any old business before the board? At this time, is there any new business before the board? At this time, is there any public comment from the audience on any topic? Well, Mr. Well, Riley. Well, two questions, please. Mr. Riley, would you come up to the microphone, please? Please identify yourself and put your address for the record. Mike Riley, um, 700 Carroll Avenue, Elkhurst. I have two questions about the mission one use. Um, one, will that cost any of our special education uh, staffers their jobs? It's the it's the it's the it's the eights. The eights, right? The eights. 
Okay. No, no, no new. No. 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 Okay. As of now, as of right now, no. That's uh, we have a few bus aids mm -hmm. that uh, that we utilize to go out of district or in different district runs that either Monmouth Ocean or uh, uh, or they uh, provide Mr. Warner. Okay, so this is just additional staffing to what we already. Have. This is the current right. This is the current staffing that we've been doing for a few uh, several years now. Okay. Right. Uh, so then, this is not a, a leading towards possible privatization at some time. It's the board hasn't decided on anything new. So this is existing uh, aids that we've had. So this is nothing new for privatization. So as we've done in past years. Yes. Right? Okay. Great. That's all. Thank you. Is there any other comment? Questions at this time from the public? At this time, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion? Second. Second. Second.